Well, I have the pleasure of speaking to Mr. Jerome. Hey. How are you? Fine, I'm fine. All fine. right, so you have been here. We talked a little bit in the line just now. And so you've been here 18 years. 18 years. And you came here on a, a church trip. Yeah. But it was just by just vacation. vacation. Yeah, two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. And then you decided to come back in 2006. I well, came back. I came back in 2002. Oh, 2002. That's right. 18 years. Okay. So 2002, and then from there, well, why did you decide to come back? Why? What made you take that leap? Well, when I when I when I came here the first time, <clears throat> I had no idea. I grew up in the 60s. I knew nothing about Africa. You know, they didn't teach us in high school and things like that. The only thing we really had was Black History Week. I saw that on the episode of Good Times. So Florida says Black yeah. History Week. And I got so tired of being Carter. What's his name? Carter that made with the peanuts? Oh, George Washington, George Washington Carver. Washington. Yeah, right, right, right. Every year I was George Washington Carver. But even when I went to college, undergrad, we didn't um, teach you black history. We didn't have black history. Really? No, not, in, not, at, not the HBCUs. Wait a minute. And none of the white schools either. Wait a minute. Now, my generation thinks that something completely different. I mean, we think that all of this was happening, and, that, and but you're the second person that I've heard say this. When I was in college, we were demonstrating to open up black and white establishments on the eastern shore of Maryland. Okay. Because that's where UMES was, Maryland State, where I went to college. So we talked about Princess Anne, Salisbury, Cambridge, um, Ocean City, okay. Maryland, all those places. Blacks were not allowed to go. Okay. So when, when it came to the education, what, what, what was the narrative about Africa as far as what you understood when you were growing up? I didn't know anything. Nobody told you anything about Africa. But they, they didn't call you African American then. They called you colored. Yeah. Okay. And so then it went to black, and then it went to African American. So there was no knowledge about Africa, no conversation about Africa, no nothing. I used to, um, in my house, I have pictures of my great grandparents on my my mother's side her grandmother and her father, grandfather, which are my great-grandparents, and I have pictures of my grandparents, who's her parents, who got married in 1902. But I just always think, if these are my great-grandparents, where did they come from? Hmm. I didn't know. I thought that maybe they just dropped out of the sky, but, you know, I'm serious, I, I, yeah, didn't, no, no, I had no idea, no idea at all. And we didn't really discuss Africa at all in my family. We was in Maryland, right out about 24 miles from the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. And, 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 and I mean, what you're saying resonates with me because now <laughs> it makes sense. Because growing up, I never, my, my aunts, my grandparents, my parents, my mother, nobody ever talked about Africa. And if ever I heard anything about Africa, it was always negative. Yeah. And then Roots came along, which I think started causing people to say, okay, wait a minute, there's something to this Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but that was 1977. I was married then. Right, you, you were grown, <laughs> we ever had children and everything at that point, exactly. by 77. Yeah. And so, wow. I mean, this is why I believe it's important that we speak to the generations before us because it offers a context to our story, our collective right. stories. Yeah. And it, because I have a lot of people who follow my channel um, in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And they are telling me how they're learning things that they didn't even know because, you know, just the conversations that they didn't have growing up. And so when I'm hearing you say this, I'm like, wow. Now See, it, I had no idea that we, all the things that we invented. And I'm just learning about those, most of those now since I've been over here. Mm. Because, you know, we, we had built automobiles. We gave them competition, Ford Company and all that, but they didn't make it because they couldn't get the monies to build the cars. Right, so it's always the finance. So they drove them out, you know, out of business. But the inventions that we made in the United States, the white man is still benefiting from it.